First, I'll show you the basic instructions, then the detailed ones. You have the following materials to begin constructing a mask. Filter cover, mask, razor, 550 cord, self-adhesive bandage tape, cotton pad, heat source, hot glue or adhesive, and isopropyl. Start by cutting out three strips of cord, 16 inches and 8 inches. Using hot glue, put in the seal. Melt the ends of the strap cords. Thread them through the strap holes and melt the other end. Cut out an 11 inch strip of bandage tape for an elastic strap. Make sure to sanitize. Insert the filter and filter cover and you're done. Now for the detailed instructions. Print the mask without support, 0% in fill, and slightly faster speeds than what you generally use. These settings are good, flexibility, filament usage, and print speed. Once you print the mask, do what you usually do to get the masks off, but be careful taking them off, since they are a bit fragile. Sanitization is important, as these are going to be on people's faces. Wash your hands thoroughly. You should also clean your work area, and sanitize it too. It also helps to use a piece of wax paper to keep things clean, and define the workspace. Start out by measuring the 550 cord, silicone liner, rolled t-shirt, or other soft material to form the ceiling. I found that 16 inches for the large mask is a suitable length. The straps will be 8 inches for each side, a total of 32 inches is needed for a large mask. You could use another hard string that doesn't pull on the skin or hair, such as a rolled t-shirt. To hot glue the lining, start by applying glue to the mask along the edge, and then put the cord under the glue and push the cord up to the edge of the mask. This ensures that the entire area is sealed and gets the glue under the cord, as well as give you some protection from the hot glue. When you get to the end, try to overlap the cords to fill the gap between the nose and the seal. Do not try to smooth any spots by running the hot glue gun over the area. Doing so will actually make it look worse and possibly damage the print. If you don't have hot glue, you could probably use Elmer's glue or something similar. If you don't have either, you can make flower glue. Call off any excess hot glue. If there's any spots that are not sealed, just apply hot glue to the area. Get the heat source in 8 inch cords. Apply the heat at a right angle to the cord on the sides while twisting. Do this until it forms a ball, making sure not to burn it too much. Once it makes a ball, wait a second before putting it into the water, or it will make the end flaky. Once you cool it in the water, wait 3 seconds. After that, soak some water in the cord with a towel. Make sure not to burn yourself, as it's very hot. Put the unmelted end through one of the holes and then through the other hole on the corresponding side. You can use a bamboo skewer to help you. Once it's in the other hole, you can trim it a bit. Melt it the same way as before to seal it onto the mask. This guy put his finger into the water. He touched the end while it was still hot and burnt himself. Don't be like him. Measure out and cut about 11 inches of the sab tape. This will vary upon the size of the person's head. The length is roughly half the size of the average head circumference. Fold the sab tape in half lengthwise while stretching it. If you do not stretch it, it will not stick to itself. Put one in 
bridge on either end under the strap and, while stretching, put one half of the tape onto the other. Then, while stretching, fold the sides that are not layered onto the layered part so that it captures the middle. This forms a decent bond and you can tie something at the end or glue to secure the layered part. Give it a tug to make sure it won't easily fall apart. Check the fit of the mask to make sure there's nothing poking you. It seals well and fits well. Then give it a general look over. Look for strings, dirt, and the general quality of the mask. good, go ahead and sanitize it with isopropyl and a suitable cloth or towel. This is extremely important, your hands are always dirty. And this is going on someone's mouth. Make sure to wipe the seal, the strap, inside and outside the mask. Last step is to let it dry so that you can insert the filter. A decent filter is a simple cotton round. Just pop it in, screw the cover on, and put it in a safe area where it will not be contaminated.